Academic imposter syndrome may make you feel like a clown. But what if the truth is, you're in a circus? But that still doesn't mean you're not a fucking clown. Is the diagnosis of imposter syndrome a partial gator of truth? Or a total crock of shit? Imposter syndrome used to mean feelings of inadequacy despite high competency. You think you suck even though everyone else can see you're amazing. This sounds credible because we know the mind can play tricks like this. But when we tested lecturers' feelings of inadequacy against student evaluations, we found out that the students agreed that the teachers who thought they were bad teachers were indeed bad teachers. So what do we do now? Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. What they want you to believe, based on no real evidence, is that imposter syndrome itself is causing the low teacher evaluation scores. They don't want you to consider that being a better teacher to begin with might lead to both feelings of competency and better student evaluations. Look at how this journal article warns of the dire consequences correlated with people thinking of themselves as imposters. Faculty members might end up, and I quote, thinking of academic failures as due to their professional incompetence. As opposed to what? Blaming their own failings on an intangible concept like, I don't know, the devil? Certification compels you. The power of certification compels you. Sorry, I mean imposter syndrome. We are talking about pathologizing and diagnosing the act of a person taking responsibility for their own failings. Finally, pure copium. Let's consider for a moment what none of these journal articles dare to. Perhaps academic credentials and academic positions are not infallible measures of competency, and maybe there are in fact frauds in academia. And since academia is so fond of self-diagnosing a mental disorder, which by the way isn't in the Diagnostical Statistical Manual, let's take a look at mental health funding at the University of Auckland. A group of academics at Auckland University decided voluntarily and without any funding or incentive to do so, I might add, they decided to look into the results of research funding at their own institution. When looking at mental health funding, they found there was 10 million of public health funding invested into research and half of that money has absolutely nothing to show for it. The researchers were required to report even a null hypothesis, but they just didn't. Literally, there is no evidence that the research they did took place or that they did anything other than take the money. If you worked in any other industry, you would go to jail for fraud. But in academia, the funding boards not only paid money to people who produced nothing at all, they went back and they kept funding them. Proponents of imposter syndrome will ask the question, how can anyone be incompetent when they are so qualified? But I will ask the question, how could anyone get access to so much public health funding without having impressive credentials? I guarantee the people who took this money and produced absolutely nothing with it were all PhDs. Anyone working on this project if indeed any work took place at all, because we don't actually know that any work did take place, would have likely been PhD students. Their credentials and their accolades didn't amount to anything in reality. The original supposed irrefutable evidence for the existence of imposter syndrome was that people who had high degrees of qualification considered themselves incompetent. People within academia will write articles as though this is an unthinkably absurd scenario. All I'm looking for in the imposter syndrome research 
is someone to acknowledge the possibility that someone who is qualified might also be incompetent. I'll pay you whatever you want. Oh. One way or another, I'm getting on this train. Oh, no, 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 no. You're going to stay right here until the Merovingian says different. If I know him, you're going to be here for a long, long time. I don't want to hurt you. You don't get it. I built this place. Down here, I make the rules. Down here, I make the threats. Down here, I'm God. Naturally, this report was just buried and immediately forgotten about. One thing they found is that people who claim to be minorities have higher rates of imposter syndrome. It will be interesting to see if the recent Supreme Court ruling has any effect on this. And to address this, I'll just leave you with the testimony of Joey Diaz on the Your Mother's House podcast. The university came to me, came to my face. I don't give a fuck who goes to jail now. And they were like, I wasn't thinking. Tom. Yeah. I used in the application Joey Diaz. I wasn't even thinking about it. A week later, pff, denied. But when I went to one of the classes, I bumped into a guy that was trying to help me. And he goes, aren't you Cuban? And I go, yeah. He goes, what's your real name? I go, uh, Jose. Uh... And the guy looked at me and he goes, if you were to redo <laughs> your paperwork, <laughs> staple your birth certificate on there with Jose Diaz, let's see what happens. Let me put a word in for you. Dog, the application wasn't even dry. I dropped it off, <laughs> and by the time I got home, at the time I had a pager, but I had a home number. Yeah. And they had already left a message. Hi, Jose. Congratulations. You've been accepted to the Colorado. <laughs> Listen to me. And I'm snorting coke with three hands. <laughs> I'm about to go to prison. Like, no, 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 not yet. Now, I hadn't kidnapped the guy yet, all right? So I'm taking, I'm selling cars, snorting coke. I'm living like a double life. I'm selling cars, robbing people, <laughs> snorting blow at night, eating pussy. And in the daytime, at, from like five to nine, I became a fucking faggy student. <laughs> I had my little CU shirt on it. And I'd go take classes and talk to people. What were you studying? I was studying political science. Because once they came at me with that program, but it was called the CUOP college program. Are you ready for this? Yeah. All you had to do was maintain a C plus. Oh. And they geez. kept giving you money. I had become Joey Cash Registers because <laughs> I had a friend that had Joey a book. Cash he had a book <laughs> for all the money they gave Spanish people. See, this is with all those fucking dumb white people. All they had to do was go to the border. <laughs> As soon as the Mexican jumps the wall, they grab my key. <laughs> Listen, no problem. We're going to take you to our house. You're going to marry my stupid white daughter. We're going to have like a fake wedding, Guadalajara style, whatever. I'm going to give you 10 Gs. Set you. Think about the half, mil the half million they paid. Half a they million. They could have paid 20,000, 30,000, married the daughter, and now you're Last not Christina name. Pazinski no more. Yeah. You're Christina Hernandez. Yeah. And you walk right into fucking. Or you fucking, can just change your last name. Think legally. about it. Go think of how fucking security. stupid, how easy, how many loopholes they are. Did you see the girl yesterday? The dumb bitch didn't even play fucking soccer. No. Did you see this? No. Weren't they photoshopping? Yesterday, the, the chick soccer, they went to the soccer coach and they said, uh, are you kidding me? This is one of the daughters? Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday it came out that the, uh, the guy took a chick from around here somewhere, Woodland Hills. And they fucking made a fake profile that she was a soccer player and they made the captain. The, 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 the chick never fucking kicked the ball. The coach was like, I never saw her. So it's racketeering. Whoa. So they got the soccer coach at UCLA Damn. or USC. Correct me Damn. if I'm wrong. Holy shit. For racketeering. I mean, it's just cold blood and they didn't need to go to those extremes. Yeah. Why would you have to go to yeah, these extremes true. and do you know, this? You know how much money they were giving me? How much? Honestly. Every time I turned my head, I was getting a check for twenty five hundred to five thousand. What? Jose Marti, Johnny, any Spanish guy that made more money, they just donate, and they have a fund sitting for Spanish people. 
And all you got to do is just apply. <laughs> and they would give me fucking thousands. And you're like, I, yo no hablo inglés. Gracias. Would, oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't talk on this. And when I was on campus, yeah. I was like a Jap. You know how Japs come around with a camera and they bow and they don't know nothing. I, I don't know. I don't know. You should have seen me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I was like the fat chick and and, uh, and man on fire when he remember like Odita. I should have said la niña, la niña. They would talk to me. I didn't know nothing. I bow. I take pictures like a fucking like I just came back from Cuba. You should have seen me from as soon as I hit the fucking campus. Yeah, I was like Vinny Chinjigante. Yeah. Oh, I, I was like a half a retard. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept asking, even though I was like that retarded kid that has to follow everybody in school to get to school every day because he forgets where the school is. You ever have that guy that just tagged along? Yeah. He just waited for you. I was that fucking guy. Oh, shit. I held that fucking moniker up for two years. And when I would see people from the college, I'd just be Spanish. You use the R word. Sorry. What's that? <laughs> I said. You use the R word. <laughs> oh, my God. It was fucking hilarious. When I was so when they find my paperwork, they're gonna put me <laughs> under the jail with those dumb white people. Yeah. Because I took more money. <laughs> I was taking money in prison. When I came out of prison, the first place I went to these are in Colorado, they had like three checks waiting for me for like twelve five. That's how I got you know Damn. you know in the mafia they give you a boost? Yeah. They gave me a boost. They gave me a twelve five boost. Jesus. And then when I reapplied, they said you can't come into the University of Colorado you must with have... felonies. Oh really? Oh. So now they had me. So now I had to switch majors. From political science, because who's going to hire me as an attorney? <laughs> <laughs> My plan was to get a co political history history major, yeah. political science history major, and then get into the Spanish law school like a doctor. That's yeah. where the big money came. That's when they started buying you cars and paying for your apartments. And let me tell you something. Uh, about four years ago, I got a letter in the mail from the U.S. State Department. And shit. Me and my wife looked at it. We hit the drum roll. And we opened it up. All they wanted back was twenty six hundred bucks. Are you wow. serious? Out of all that money, they, I wrote the they wanted it back though. Twenty six twenty five a student loan. I had taken out for twenty six hundred for twelve credits or something like that. I just took twenty six and bought a car, and then sold the car. I was flipping cars then on campus. Jesus, that's what I'm saying. No, sell the like I was Dude, like, this was like the this was a, a fucking money machine. It was a money machine. This is why when you're Spanish, all you have to do is go somewhere you don't want to be. <laughs> you're not going to get into USC. They're not going to give you no money. We got 2,000 Mexicans in this neighborhood. Yeah. You're right. in no danger. Go to the we Midwest. Go to, we go to you, Iowa City. Or you Oklahoma apply, you or apply some to shit, the yeah. University of Iowa. You apply yeah. Yeah. anywhere where blacks and Spanish don't want to be. Because <laughs> they'll look at each other and go, why are we here? Because we're getting paid, bitch. <laughs> Whether it's Montana. Boise. Boise, yeah. you know, those places. Omaha. University of Michigan, yeah. Nebraska. Yes. Oh, they're begging for Spanish yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Nebraska, all they got, you know. Kansas. So that's the move. That's Holy the shit. move.